Well, that's that's the dream. That's what you hope for is that that it gets up to that level. But but honestly, um, we that's what we set out to do. Is not so much. I mean, we I, I started making cinema feature films, and I wanted to make an immersive big screen experience with immersive sound like at, we, we mixed the sound in Dolby Atmos and we found the original multi-tracks of the music and everything. So really it was very obvious to me that the level of intimacy and the emotional journey I was taking people on, it came out of drama. I mean I, it, it, I actually had developed a drama script about Michael you know with an actor, the classic biopic like Bohemian Rhapsody and that had failed to get up mainly because I couldn't actually lock down on the lead, <laughs> the lead actor. And because everyone, even some of the great lead actors we approached, they just didn't, to my mind, didn't have that sort of um, quality that Michael had. There was a lot of people who could play that louche rock star stereotype, but it got to a point where I just said, who better to play Michael than Michael himself? Absolutely. It was like I, I was shooting a series of music videos with him about three months after that accident and I'd seen him just before the accident and this wasn't a, a rock star sort of slowly going off the rails into ego land, you know, like you see in film, you know, like the archetype. But um, this was something suddenly, seriously had happened and all he was telling me was that this assault had happened and he'd lost his sense of taste and smell, which is bad enough in itself, because knowing Michael, you'd sort of go, wow, that's, that's all, that's 99% of his pleasures in life. It's not money, it's the sensuality. Just look at him on stage. So um, it was very obvious that you couldn't have a coherent conversation for more than five minutes at a time, and then suddenly that would change, that you would have the same obsessive com conversations and you would have repeated uh, conversations that were very paranoid, you know. So it was all conspiracy theories and people following me and, you know. Funnily enough, after the, news, the recent News of the World scandals, maybe he was right, people were following him and his phone was tapped, but he was obsessed that his phone was tapped. So yeah, it was, ve it was very obvious he was a very different and troubled person after that. Well, funnily enough, it does have a connection to Carla Vivari because my first feature film was here in 1984. And to get here, I had to travel through Prague. And back then it was communist and, you know, no modern signs, no McDonald's. It was, from a filmmaker's perspective, it was visually insane. It was like going back in time. So we went through Prague, me and my partner and, and animator, co-filmmaker, Lynn Marie Milburn, and we ended up in Carla Vivari our film did well here and everything, and we went back and had a few days in Prague. We consequently, we would straight away into another video with Michael, I think it was Need You Tonight. And, um, and we just kept telling stories like, we, you gotta, we gotta make a film there, you know, Michael, you can be the lead actor and everything. And so when the opportunity after Need You Tonight had gone to number one, I gave me, uh, came up, it gave me a lot of power. Basically I said, I'll only do your next video if we, ha if we can film in Prague. And we ended up filming in Prague and it was, uh, you know, it was, I think it was the third Western crew after Amadeus and Yentl. And here we are doing uh, a music video for a concept that a lot of the, the population here didn't actually, under, you know, had only heard about MTV and not. And it was, it was a hoot. I mean, I, I definitely know that it changed Michael and he, he was travelling all over the world, but he'd never been to a place like, like Prague or the Czech Republic. 